Ciao friends! In this video I want to talk about calculation groups and specifically how we can describe the definition of a calculation group in an article or in a book or maybe in an email you want to use to share a calculation group with someone else. Calculation groups can be defined using Visual Studio or Tabular Editor for Power BI Desktop for example and you create a calculation group creating a table, creating elements, calculation items in this table using the user interface. However, when it comes to sharing this with someone else, it could be difficult. Or even just to document what you did in a calculation group, you have to sp specify a number of properties. And we didn't have a good way to do that until now, until the DAX scripting that we can use in Tabular Editor, which actually implements a syntax we would have liked to have when we wrote our book about DAX. When we wrote this book, we actually hoped that such a syntax would have been implemented in Power BI Desktop. Today we have the syntax in Tabra Editor, better than nothing, and actually we can use it to describe the calculation group so that you can implement a calculation group by importing the script if you have Tabra Editor 3, or you can just create manually the elements in the UI using Tabular Editor 2 or Visual Studio depending on the product that you use. So let's take a look at how it works. So in this case I have a, a Power BI Desktop model that has a number of calculation groups, so more than one. And in this case I open this model with Tabular Editor 3. You see here that every table that has this calculator symbol is actually a calculation group. And you can recognize it because there are calculation items. And so the user interface is different from a table that just has uh, partitions and columns, for example. So you see that I have one, two, three, four calculation groups in this case, maybe five. Actually, I have also a time intelligence one. So I got a, a complex example because I wanted to show you, I wanted to show you that if I had to describe how to create this calculation group, in an article or in an email, I have to provide a number of properties, not just the name of the calculation group and the name of the calculation items, but for each calculation item, the actual expression, if there is a form of string, the form of string expression that is here, and other properties that are included in the properties pane. Now, in this case, uh, we don't have much, but for example, it's very important to use the right, the proper calculation group precedence when you describe a calculation group in a model that has multiple calculation groups. So if we take a look at how we uh, now write articles, you can see that when it comes to describing a calculation group, we use this syntax that has uh, the keyword calculation group at the beginning, followed by the name of the calculation group and the name of the column that actually uh, includes the calculation items. And this syntax is followed by calculation item, the name of the calculation item equal the expression for that calculation item. Now, it's a little bit intuitive how this syntax works, but the good thing is that if I go back to tabular editor and I right click a single calculation group and I click on script DAX, I can see the syntax of the calculation group generated in the DAX script window. Now, in this case, I have a single calculation group, but you see that if I format it, you see that the precedence is actually defining the precedence of the calculation group. And for each calculation item, we have the ordinal property, which defines where the calculation item has to be placed in actual order when you publish it. Now, what happens if I do the same for another calculation group? I see the definition of the second calculation group. But the good thing in Tabular Editor 3 is that actually we could, uh, multi we could use the multiple selection for calculation groups. So one, two, three, four, five, with a single right click and script DAX, I can see the definition of the five calculation groups. One of them is including actually also a calculated column. Yes, you can create a calculated column in a calculation group if you want. It's a table like anyone else, but Let's move forward. We see here that we have the precedence 
And we have, if I scroll down, I have, I think, a, a couple of examples where I have, uh, yes, the former string and not just the ordinal. So this way we can actually have a better uh, way to communicate and to share the calculation group. But it's not only that. If I want to change the former string property, for example, and let's say that I want just one decimal point for a percentage, I can just do this and I can click this icon apply. And now whatever I wrote in the DAX scripting has been applied to the model which means that you can actually copy and paste an entire calculation group script, uh, paste into a DAX scripting window and apply. And then you have the calculation group defined in your model. So I hope the calculation group will be useful. Uh, the syntax of the scripting for calculation group will be useful to you to quickly understand, to quickly read articles where we describe the complexity of a calculation group in a, in a shorter way and also to share calculation group that you write with your colleagues or with your friends. Enjoy DAX! Mm -hmm.